I'm really excited uh, to be on the stage again with Tim this year. We were at the Brand Innovators last year, along with 72 and Sunny, and uh, it's great to be back again a year later, a year later out of COVID as well. So good, good, all good things there. Um, I'm really excited. I wanted to start, uh, talk about these uh, partnerships, brand partnerships uh, that the NFL has uh, and how you're leveraging them. Uh, I know the strategy around uh, using, um, connecting with community and players and fans and how using that to kind of grow the overall fan base for the NFL? Yeah, you know, again, when you think about particularly youth marketing, right? We have, let me say this, we have three key acquisition targets that are incredibly important for the NFL to sort of be successful in. One is our youth, because you can imagine, right? It's the future of the NFL. And you all know as marketers that they are very elusive and, and challenging to reach and engage with. And they're not any easier for, for the NFL. So we do lots of things in order to attract that audience and engage with them. And I, and I alluded before about music, fashion, and gaming, very important. So we've got a lot of programs this week with all of our partners sort of in those three verticals that we are you know, working together again with NFL players to sort of engage and bring in. And obviously we, we have these physical gatherings that we have together and then we also live stream it and, and put it on our own properties. Um, and then you have programs which I think is, I'm really proud of, really cool, like the Origins uh, Project. And Origins is a, we work with local designers, all right? We started doing it last year in LA and we're continuing it this year uh, in Arizona. And essentially we find from underserved communities, we find emerging artists and we work with them together with NFL shop which you know NFL shop and fanatics you can imagine how much uh, merchandise we sell so we work with these artists and from these different communities and we create we collaborate and we create these um, you know hats and shoes and shirts and what have you together and then we use the power of our platforms in order to create awareness around that and then anything we earn off of uh, NFL shop then we give back to these communities and it's just been a fantastic program because you know young people get really excited about it but it's also a way for us to connect and engage and give back uh, to our to our communities Lucinda is who is one of you know the emerging artists here in the local she's a um, Native American she she lives in this area and she designed all the tickets that you're gonna you know see physically and uh, digitally and then she also designed a lot of the work you see around Phoenix and around Scottsdale a lot of that art is coming from from her and so again it was a way for us to put a spot a light on her um, celebrate her bring her up and allow her to also be successful and in so doing really creating a, a positive sense of awareness and I would say momentum for for the NFL so those are, those are just two but um, there are lots of programs that if you go through this week that you'll see that in some way or another are partnerships that the NFL has you know big brothers big sisters I'm gonna perform perform Jesus Christ <laughs> I am, do. I'm going to participate I'll try not to perform uh, to, um, tomorrow night with the, the, uh, the GLAD sort of, sort of night of pride that we'll have and it's another great program uh, and, and we'll have we'll have a course content from that that'll go out again on all of our channels and uh, Tim do you get uh, pushback from stakeholders within the NFL like why not stick just to football why why you know engage in these other uh, mechanisms with the community and how, what are some of the metrics that you use to kind of demonstrate success? Um, without a doubt, there are, you know, lots of uh, noise and voices out there about, you know, why are you getting, they, they, some people call it politics, right? Like, why are you getting involved in politics? Why don't you just stick to football? That's what we want to see anyway. And, you know, I always try to remind people, it's not politics. It's the stuff we're talking about is humanity, right? So stop calling it politics. It's about connecting with human beings and helping them, right? And using the, 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 the power and the leverage and the influence you have to give back to communities. And there are some messages that are going to be, um, you know, more controversial than, than others. When, when we started talking year round, for example, around social justice, there are a lot of, you know, there are a lot of people who said, why are you talking about this? This is not your area. But you know what? 
we've begun to do a year-round programs right now and the amount that we have earned and given back to, to these programs is incredible and so we don't see that anymore as like two or three or four weeks a year we see it that as a year-round program and again yes we have thousands of players this is important to them it's important to us we get behind the things that our players care about and we have very important strong partners who work with this on an ongoing basis that helps us create a level of awareness and then give back to these things give back to these programs um lgbqt i talked about the night of pride tomorrow night um you know we create awareness it's important for us to be inclusive we represent all of americans if you look about the if you look at the fan base of the nfl we're equally divided across states across gender um across political points of view so it's important for us to really represent all fans and all parts of america so um, we began to do a lot more communication around this area because we, we realized that we could really help. Carl Nassib, which was the first active player to come out, okay, um, when he came out, it was, a, it was a very important event. And together with 72 and Sunny, we created this very impactful spot. And the first line of the ad was football is gay, okay? Now, you can imagine um, the noise, if you will, that, that we heard in all directions. And man that was so meaningful and so impactful to so many people and then others joined us right and we gave them a voice as well and we put them on our platforms and the amount of good that we did from that one little ad is absolutely incredible and people would ask me like well what are you going to do there's all this controversy some people don't like it and i said we're going to run it again and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep running it until people stop being surprised. You know, it's like what's the big deal? Let's just let's just normalize it and let's just keep talking about it. And I think that by having that attitude, it's helped us sort of create more, I think, openness and more willingness to see these things in a, in, a, in a different light. And I know Artis and I were talking about it this morning at breakfast. You had some of the same issues in the same area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh. Oh, this working? I'll give you the smack. Yeah, so, and, and, and it's, you know, what Tim is alluding to, and, and, and I, I love to talk about this. So just so you understand about who we serve, right? So about 66% of the kids that who we serve are from communities of color. 55% live in poverty. Another 60% is led by a single family, uh, single head of household. Uh, about 25% of the kids we serve has a parent incarcerated or in the parole system. And here's what I tell everyone about those numbers. None of those numbers define who our kids are. What defines them? It's like any kid, access, opportunity, empowerment, connection, the opportunity to feel like they belong and that they're being heard, right? So platforms like the NFL allow for communities sometimes who are often not heard, who often sometimes feel like they are left in the dark, they have the opportunity to connect and to feel like they belong. One of our biggest initiatives is around how we ensure that there are mentors for kids in the LGBTQ plus community because what we know very often in our organization is a lot of times those kids don't feel comfortable coming out to even their own parents. 50% of the kids who are in our programs or in LGBTQ plus communities have told their big, their mentor, but not told their, their parent and their family. Mm -hmm. So those types of support mechanisms, those types of investments and the types of platforms to normalize. I love that word, Tim, it's so important because that's the opportunity. And if not the NFL, then who? Right. And that's the question that we all have to ask ourselves, whether we're in the place of individuals or in the place of being the largest uh, brand in the world or any company or any organization. If not us, then who? We have to take that level of mentality. And that's the opportunity and the platform that we all have in front of us. And you can't please everybody. Right. You know, you're not going to please everybody. And I think trying to ride the fence and, and not create a level of controversy, it, it doesn't really work in the long term. You've got to like do the things that are that are you know aligned with your values and the things that you know the things that you say that you believe in you've got to be consistent on those things and move forward now we look at metrics just like everybody does you can look right here um guess what actually most people do care right you can see right here so sure there are segments of our audience that don't like some of these things that we talk about but if you look at it overall you can see right there the growth in the perceptions of clubs players and league has grown significantly 
since we started these, this, this new effort, okay? Or more consistent effort. It's not new. It's been going on for decades. But since we started talking about it more consistently and being stronger in our voice throughout the year, you can see right there, and, and look at the things that have really rose to the top. It's things about being culturally relevant. It's about bringing and uniting people together. These are the types of things that people actually care about. So in, in, at the end of the day, it's not only helping us be more successful, um, to, to give back more, but it's also growing the brand. So it doesn't have to be an either or scenario. Artists, when you look at partnerships like the NFL and other partners that you work with, you know, what, is, what does success look like for you with a partnership like the NFL or some of the other partners that, you're, that, are, that you work with like Pepsi? Yeah, so it's uh, it's been really incredible because, of course, part of our work is is serving young people, right? So we want to see our programs continue to grow to serve more young people, to get more volunteers, uh, the things that it takes to do that. Revenue, <laughs> revenue is really important for our program investment, but also the idea of building relevancy, right? Our mission um, and bringing more people back in, into the fold. But it's what I said earlier, we don't come to the table as hey we're a charity that's here to support we come to the table as we're an equal partner at the table that's creating value together and that's been with the nfl and i think is the nfl relationship is the gold standard to that it's because of that nfl relationship we've been able to sort of set that model with a lot of corporate partners that we work with and what we do is we look at all the indicators that we come and we build a plan together with a, a corporate partner a lot of them is they want to get their workforce engaged because they know we're the largest you've uh, workplace mentoring in the country, a number of them are trying to build their pipeline into places that they haven't had the opportunity to go into diverse communities. So we're able to sort of do that. Our largest, our fastest growing population, a lot of people don't know because we traditionally serve five to 18. Our fastest growing population since the pandemic is 18 to 25. And the reason that is, is because so many young people are now getting to the place of graduating, but they're asking the question, I don't know what's next. Right? I don't know how to navigate. How do I fill out a FAFSA form? How do I interview for that job? How do I prepare the skills that I need? Good luck so, with the DMV. It's just nobody's figured it <laughs> exactly, out. Exactly, right? So when you have corporate partners who come to the table and say, hey, this not only helps you and kids, but this helps us to meet our goals in terms of workforce pipeline and development. It helps us to meet our employee engage, engagement goals. It helps us to look at our ESG strategy much more effectively and really look at what the social mean. This is not a, hey, just help you mentality. What we come to the table and say is, how do we create the value to engage stakeholders in a way that build partnerships, build opportunities, build business goals while doing good for society as well? That's a great example of success. Um, Glenn, from an agency perspective, um, how is the agency kind of helping the NFL kind of with that strategy of connecting with community, with players, with fans, and do that in an authentic way? First of all, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year, and I was just listening to you guys, and I'm just marveling at how amazing it is to be with these two people and these two brands. Uh, with, as part of a company that's uh, really a statement of optimism. So first of all, thank you for including us up here and um, and for your partnership. And I hope and I hope our partnership in the future. Um, how we help with the NFL? You know, I th Tim's story about that um, the ad with uh, the Trevor Project with Carl Nassib. I'm glad he brought that up because when he talks about normalizing this for for um, the country for the world. You know, there's a big job also normalizing it internally. All, all your, a lot of your peers also um, are, saw that, and, and that was a promise that their, their organization made that everyone in the organization has to keep, and which is what gets me most excited about working together. I think uh, w that's a good example of it. Was, it was uncomfortable for people because we stayed authentic to what we were trying to do. Um, there was a moment when we were working on that ad, and I'm sorry we're not showing it, but it's all typography if anybody hasn't seen it. And the opening statement is football is gay and it ends with football is for everyone. And um, there were conversations about just saying football is for everyone at, at, from the get-go. And uh, that, that's a small detail, but in the words of Dr. Dre on the Grammys, everything matters. <laughs> Where I, I was like, it ha we have to say, we have to come out saying what we want to say right away. And Tim and I had a conversation with each other, just one-on-one, -on -one. all of his team's talking about it, all my team's talking about it, but we just locked arms and said, we're, gonna, we're just going to come out and, 
and say the thing the NFL uh, needs to say and needs to live up to over the future. And, that's, and then we're going to go from there. We're not going to, to shortcut it. And I, I think that is actually the key to staying authentic in these relationships. It's these moments, that, these critical moments through the year where you just have to be each other's bullshit detectors. The audiences today are so attuned to bullshit and you know, you get in these rooms, it's easy to start spouting bullshit. You just, it sounds good. This idea sounds good. This execution is good. And maybe, but maybe it's just what you want it to be and it's not really landing. And I, I think if you can get in a partnership where um, you can, you can rely on each other's uh, <laughs> bullshit detectors, I, that's, that's the key. At least for us, that's been the key to, I think, uh, this successful, not just partnership, but um, friendship over the years. Yeah, Glenn, I, th I think, uh, you know, Going back with your partnership with Tim over the years with Activision and then now with the NFL, you know what's kind of the secret sauce to a successful partnership? Cholula. Um, it, it that is good though. That beats better than top to you. Um, the secret. Well, we are we're strategic and creative partners with the NFL. Um, I think the secret sauce though is probably two things. We share ambition. Every time we get together for a new season or to figure out what to say for a new initiative or how to get behind a player's initiative or, or anything, we treat it like the Super Bowl. Tim is always like, if it's not you know best ever, what are we doing? That's how we show up too. So I think the fact that we, we have that understanding from the get-go, high ambition, makes it work. And then um, the, our ability to collaborate, we, we have a one team, one dream, orientation with each other's teams and I know a lot of people talk about collaboration but we really commit to the principles that make it work which does mean somebody in the room is not going to be cool with where we net out but we're going to explore all of it and Tim and I have actually gotten better at this over the years just agreeing to explore each other's ideas we recognize each other as creative people not as client and agency we recognize each other as strategists and ideators um, we agree everything might have merit don't squash the flower before it comes out of the ground you know and, but at the end of the day, after we've done, we've, we're finished exploring everything, we, we have an, a, a covenant, which is we're going to make, deciders are going to make some calls, and everybody who's put in their ideas and had them considered needs to get on board with that idea. And so I think that leads to um, some of the work, I, I, I like to believe, feeling like it's, it's in its highest form of integrity when, when people see it. Uh, the other thing I think is important is that we, we're very open and transparent about the work but we're also about our our situations back at the office right like I worked in an ad agency for a long time so I have a general knowledge of how agencies work but still there are dynamics and things that I don't understand that it's 72 and sunny and and Glenn will be very open with me about these things you know uh, and I you know there's some people who are uncomfortable with this or that and then we talk about it I invite them in I said well listen let me talk to them or let me talk to your entire agency you know I'll do that too yeah. um, I the commissioner knows Glenn, you know, by name. I mean, he he knows about things that don't even in, involve uh, marketing. Uh, he understands the dynamics because I let him in. I let him to know this is what's going on. Mm. And it does impact us here or there, but, like, you need to be aware of what's going on. So it's really about trust and transparency. And, yeah, we have a, we have a high bar. I, we, <laughs> we had an idea that we were going to do for the Super Bowl this week uh, all the way until how many weeks ago? So a week before Christmas. Yeah, week rip, before rip Christmas. Cord. And so I was feeling like, oh, uh, I don't know. And I called Glenn later that day. I'm like, Glenn, it's not awesome, is it? He's like, no, but I'm freaking out. No, it's not really awesome. <laughs> I'm like, and we started literally like, okay, he's the head of the agency. I'm like the head of marketing. We're like, look at the calendar. Like, okay, how many days could we do? Like, okay, we've got a director this day. And then we like, if we shot it on this day, we literally thought, and we pivoted and we dropped that idea. And we're going to come out with something this week for the Super Bowl that's fucking awesome. The fact that that came from it's you, the fact that came from you is so empowering. That normally comes from like an agency, like this isn't good enough. Can we, can we start over? You know, and no, it, uh, the fact that I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, oh fuck, okay. We got because we're going for the Super, we're trying to win the Super Bowl too. Yeah. And you know, we're pumped and proud of this work that we're going to unleash on Sunday. And then we just decided, God, it's not good enough. We got it. We just got to, you know, and all of our teams were scared shitless. By like, Christmas. How the hell are we going to do this? And, you know, and gr but great work attracts. You talk about partnerships, right? Great work attracts. Guess what? Brian Buckley decided to do the spot. 
You know, he invested heavily because he wanted to do that spot. And he dropped everything. And he's, you know, if you know Brian Buckley, he's like Mr. Super Bowl commercial. He's an incredible talent. And when he saw the idea, he's like, oh, I got to be a part of that. So, you know, and we, we pulled it off. And we're still noodling the final, final, final today. And we're going to get it out the door. But, you know, it just comes from, like, great relationships and having a common vision. That's, that's a great story, great example. <laughs> um, now I'm going to put my Amazon AWS hat on. Um, so we're talking about partnerships. Uh, you know, we've got a long-standing partnership between both Amazon and AWS with the NFL. Uh, I think about the first streaming uh, service to host NFL games with Thursday Night Football. Um, our plans to launch the Black Friday football game later in the year in November. That is or, cool. I think it's no. I think it's November uh, in 2023. Um, on the Amazon side, it's more about the media relationship and partnership um, with the uh, NFL. Um, and then on the AWS side, uh, we're really an innovation and technology partner. So uh, Tim, thinking about like the partnership and with Amazon and AWS, and how are those partnerships like critical to your success in the with the NFL brand? You know, a lot of times you know, the industry likes to split up marketing people, particularly CMOs. Like they're either a data CMO or they're a creative, you know, rock star CMO. And I really hate that because it should really be about the work. And if you like look at data and technology all these things with disdain you're an idiot right like and if, if you only think the only way to build your brand is through a big creative idea you're just you're just an idiot i <laughs> sorry to use terms like that and i and i you know and i, and I feel like if you look at spotify and you look at amazon and there are plenty of other great examples they're super creative and they understand how to get intimacy like mass intimacy through leveraging technology and data and the in the nfl's relationship with going back to your question the nfl's relationship with amazon is fantastic i mean we took they went on everybody went from watching everything on tv right to watching only on digital exclusively. That's not an easy thing to do if you consider our audience, right? The age groups and things like that. We did it, they did it, it's incredible. They use their technology to understand every little thing. Every part of an athlete's body is a data point. So they are helping us make the game safer and help the, the players actually recover faster and all kinds of things. And by the way, it's kind of cool, right? So when our fans see the level of technology and innovation that goes into AWS with Amazon and the NFL, it builds our credentials about being a modern, um, relevant brand. So both from a pure, like practical perspective of being better at with our players and being better as an organization, it's also helping build up, build our perception. So my my advice to all of you in here: do not let anybody put you in a camp of you're a data person or you're a creative person, you gotta be both at the end of the day. Sorry to go off on a tangent there, but. Can I, yeah, can yeah. I add something to your partnership? Sure. And I, I, I don't work on that partnership, but I appreciate it both as a mar fellow marketer and on the team and as a dad of a 16 year old who I, I think the, the, there's a language you're creating with the data, uh, marrying it with sport that has become to my eye, my, my, at least my son's uh, tribe's language. That I, I whereas we, as some of us grew up sharing highlights of Barry Sanders, like you got to see this. He's like, did you know the probability of that catch, or you know how fast so and so ran? Is that's the that's the data he's uh, that's the um, stuff he's trading as cultural currency. And I, as I just really just to double down on what Tim said, I think the more brands can unlock that potential, you can introduce entire languages and, and rituals with it. I think that's going to, uh, I think, Tim, we talked about that, too, is like connecting with, the, you know, the Gen Zs and those other audiences and growing those audiences with the NFL via those various channels, both with Amazon and AWS. So I think that's a, a I think in terms of the, the NFL footprint, I know that's the areas that you're looking to grow the fan base. Yeah, I mean, again, I think we embrace anything that can help us connect an engagement with our audiences, particularly our younger audiences, we embrace, right? And we're, we're constantly, uh, with our partners, we're constantly pushing them and getting them to do things that haven't been done before. Like, how can you make us the first one to do this? How can you help this? And that's leveraging the power that we, that we have and really trying to sort of break new ground. 
Great, and I think it wouldn't be uh, uh, another Super Bowl event if we didn't share some of the ads and events that the NFL is going to be presenting. Uh, so I think we got a little bit of time here to show a couple of videos that you have about some ads that you're planning to launch for Super Bowl. Yeah, well, I want to be respectful of our friends at Brand Innovators. I know we're at 217 now. No, we got, is, are we, we got time? Okay, all right. We got five. All right, good. Excellent. We don't have the commercial. Well, we don't have a commercial. I'm still mixing it. Well, we do have a commercial, but we're not going to show it to you. <laughs> you're going to see it on Sunday with the rest of the world. It's okay. And if you're going to be, if you're going to be inside the stadium, which I hope you are, we're going to show it up on the big tron. I got to tell you, one of the highlights of being a CMO at the NFL is being able to see your ads on that big tron. That's pretty cool. Uh, we did, together we did an ad, if any of you saw it a few years ago, where um, the kids were running through the entire country, so he got a run back, and all these kids, and the more places he visited, the more kids jumped in, and then they all, on a live integration, they all ran out on the field together. I mean, oh my God. I cried like a baby. I saw these guys, these guys coming in, and they're like, oh my, this is the highlight of my life. We did cry. It was really, really incredible. So being able to sort of bring to life stuff like that and to see the excitement on those kids' faces when they ran out there. By the way, I talked about precision and orchestration of an event like the Super Bowl. They gave us like, what, seven minutes to like rehearse that live integration. These kids are like eight years old, okay? <laughs> like 32, like eight, 10 year olds running out onto the field. We got three times to rehearse it and it screwed up every time. <laughs> so they blew it three times in a row and we're like, oh my God. And do you know they ran out there like perfect? Just don't perfect fall down, circle. wave your arms. You know, and it like we had to convince the guy doing the camera to like back up. He wanted to do it from the top, but that wasn't going to be the coolest angle. So he convinced Fox to like do it, you know, from from below, right? Like to get out there and back up as all those kids stormed him, and it went went off perfect. So yeah, sometimes you got to take some risks. So anyway, are you setting um, the bar too high for this year? Are, are we yeah, no, well maybe. Who cares? So these are just teasers, just. But what I think you'll see, uh, they're fun. And I'm going to give you a little bit of sort of news here as well. Yes. Um, it's not just sort of having fun and big action-packed commercial. It's going to be that. But what's most important, it's going to be focused on flag. Okay? It's going to be focused on flag. And particularly women, it's going to be a really important breakthrough sort of message coming from the NFL. It's the first time we've ever done anything like this before. So we're using our biggest platform, our biggest moment of the year, and we're going to focus on flag football. And if any of you saw the Pro Bowl last week, it was killer, right? All these guys for the first time were playing flag. This helps us open up the game. We talk about the importance of inclusion. This invites girls and women to the game and invites young people to the game and invites people who before her now have never been able to play football and so this is really i think an important message and we're doing all kinds of things on the grand to encourage us we now have nine states where uh, flag football for girls is now a varsity sport so right getting getting that in these states across the country now has been a huge objective it's the highest objective so when we meet all 32 owners for these big meetings one of the top things on the agenda is helping girls play this game across the country it's freaking cool so anyway so you're not going to see any um flag football here any females but just so you know the intrigue on this thing we're bringing action we're bringing the best directors we're bringing our full weight of the nfl to focus on flag football but that was a lot of reveal we haven't yeah. said all, any of that to anybody yeah, sorry i revealed so much <laughs> There might be an AWS one here first. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but first. But first, we're going to see an AWS <laughs> example of cool shit we're doing. Yeah, this is about the a game, game of inches. <laughs> no, it's a game of millimeters. AWS machine learning and AI cover every angle, streaming 300 million data points in real time because the data tells us all even one millimeter can make all the difference. And if AWS can do that for the NFL... Imagine what it could do for your business. Okay, so that was a, an example of some of the digital athlete stuff that we do together with AD, AWS. All right, so these next two are just 15-second teasers for our spot. Man, I'm trying to lock down the perimeter, and you worried about sauce. It's all about the sauce. All units code red. We got to run it. Come on, now.
Okay, and here's the other one. What's the play? Housekeeping! Housekeeping! And yet, flag football. How do you get flag football out of that? <laughs> You will see. Please. Right after Stay we are. Tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. I think uh, we actually have a little bit of time here for some questions. Okay. Oh, wow. That's like cheating. Thank you, Damien. And uh, I want to thank our, there you go. our uh, Tim and artists and Glenn and our fabulous moderator. Thank you so much. I don't know what you guys do. Is that actually incredible? Is that like amazing? Yeah. I'll do that for it. I'm so happy we captured it all on video. But uh, what I wanted to say is, Tim, you know, every brand uh, that we talk to wants to be relevant and wants to kind of uh, play at that intersection, you know, of culture. Where, you know, culture meets brands and. I think it's amazing what you've accomplished and listening to you and how you activated players and then got them involved with each team of every city. It's it's kind of amazing what you did. <laughs> and in, in retrospect, I mean, have you accomplished what you wanted to? Because it just seems so powerful. And like I said, every brand wants to do that. I don't get specific. And some of them do some of the miss, but and they don't have the benefit of that extension of the extended NFL family. So uh, I just think it's unbelievable. I'll do a, sort of a quick summary, I think general and then specific to, to the situation with players and stuff in the, in the NFL. I think as um, as marketers, as you sort of um, go job to job and all that, to me, what's helped me, I, I I've. I've done a lot of sort of specialized in youth culture brands. So I was at Volkswagen for a while, and then Activision Call of Duty is some, several of the big um, titles there, and then now the NFL. And everywhere I went, I surround myself with people who understand emerging youth culture, right? And I listen to them, because I don't know always. I find out stuff. I'm, I think I'm pretty curious. But I'm, I know shit that like 18 year olds don't know because I'm constantly listening to the people around me. So I surround myself with sort of kick ass, young, creative people who want to know what's ever was emerging and happening. And then I listen to what they say and I unleash them. I let them go. I don't micromanage them. I don't put fences around them. I celebrate them and I let them go, right? And I'm not saying there's never any missteps. There are, but I don't. I just don't like constrain them. I let them sort of do their thing. And sort of, so, so surrounding myself with really great people and drawing them in to a culture that they want to be a part of has really helped me sort of be relevant with my brands and sort of be on the bleeding edge, if you will, with, with these types of things. With the NFL, we have to remember, most of these guys are in their 20s, right? So they are young. They're like, super cool and they understand these things and particularly the ones who have been around long enough to sort of get some level of fame already they have teams behind them already so by the time they come to the nfl they actually know a lot of stuff right so again i treat them with respect my teams treat them with respect and we try we bring the best around the world to them to inspire them and to educate them so they can do great stuff so we help them build their own individual brands which ultimately helps build i talk about ecosystem ultimately helps build the the nfl brand because of all these players doing their thing in a great way and finding ways to express the unique person that they are that helps us stay relevant it helps us stay cool and it helps us connect with a generation that we wouldn't be able to connect with wow thank you uh, and quick question for artists i love how you uh, activated with the nfl my question is, can you give an example or two of how you work with other brands? Yeah. Some of the brands in our audience get involved with what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you for that question. And, and one thing I just want to say to what Tim said as well is that that ecosystem extends. We got an old saying where, where I come from, if you can see it, you can be it, right? 
for so many people that, that these NFL players, when they grow up, and sometimes the communities they come from, right, you only see certain things, right? In my community, when I grew up, like, we only went like four or five blocks away. That was our, that was our world. We didn't see anything else. Um, I was fortunate, you know, in, in, in my upbringing, the mentors in the village, village that I had, and which helped me to be the first in my family to go to college and graduate, but it's because I saw someone. So now that you see players not just being football players, right, because they're more than that, but when you see these brands and you see the business and you see all the different things, it gives kids an access to say, yeah, I can do that, but I can do even more, right? Or I can do something different. So that ecosystem has ripple effects in the terms of how it impacts communities because around each of these players is a broader community of people who get jobs, who get opportunities, who get access. So there's a lot that comes into this play here. Uh, to, to your question, you know, we've been able to build really strong partnerships in our organization. Some we've actually done through the NFL. Uh, P&G and, and Old Spice uh, is one of them where uh, they wanted to focus in on helping black boys towards graduation, right? So we've been partnering with them to engage in campaign work uh, and initiatives around that. They're also helping us in areas like New Orleans where we don't have, currently have a Big Brothers Big Sisters. The only market, by the way, that we don't have a Big Brothers Big Sisters major market. But it's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen, because we're talking about it. Um, but in, in doing initiatives like that, that helps us to build and the, and the frame and to talk about the stories and the opportunities of engaging uh, more men and, and engaging more uh, partners and opportunities. But one that I would, would love to, to, to give you is something that we just did, and it's with, uh, we launched a relationship with Macy's. Um, and the reason why I use that uh, as an example, because this was a partnership very similar to the NFL, that we came together and said, hey, we're aligned in terms of values, right? And certain things they were looking to do that in terms of engaging their employees, engaging their customers, engaging their values in terms of where they want to be with what they call mission everyone. Uh, we uh, engaged in a relationship with them, activated across all of their vehicles in terms of Macy's Parade, all of those types of things, talked about mentorship, the story, and engaging their employees. But one of the things that we did was the first time that they had the opportunity to do it in a major way was to go inside Macy's stores in the holidays. And the, the, the concept was simple, right? That if you give a little, you can make big impact right, in, in your community and to give back to your community. We got all of our local agencies, 230 agencies serving 5,000 communities. And here was the outcome of that. It was more engagement for that the Macy's have ever seen from all of their employees, more halo effect when they did research in terms of the brand and how the brand was solved by uh, people, their constituencies. They got their constituencies involved, leadership involved in a different way. And we ended up raising the highest amount ever raised for Macy's at register during the holiday, $4.87 million wow. that now are going back into communities to support kids. That's the, that to me is to your question, the power of partnership. And when you do it right, it's the idea that everybody can win, right? This doesn't have to be an either or conversation. This can be a business sale. This can be a business proposition. And the idea of doing good is not a separate and mutually exclusive proposition from the idea of doing well business-wise, organizational-wise, employee-wise, or whatever it may be, the business metric that you're looking at. Perfect, we have uh, time for one more question. Um, good afternoon. I'm Joe Nixon, co-founder and CCO of Concreates, and it's more so not a, yeah. a a question. It's a time to give flowers to Tim as well as Glenn, and maybe about a little bit over a month ago, um, on a Monday, as millions of other people were watching a football game, and something tragic we all thought happened, and one of our players went down. And at that very moment, the aftermath of the, the human outpour, the empathy, and we all bicker about where we stand, but that one moment made me, as well as everyone else in, in my community, feel proud to be a human. And it, it was a full circle moment because you and I, was with Glenn, we had conversations about Inspire Change, and I was like, whoa. This is why it matters. These people that you touch, these things that you do. And I just want to take this time to give you your flowers because when you do it right, you get it right. And just continue following passion and purpose. And thank you again. Thank you, Joe. Con creates. <laughs>